Good evening, everybody. Hope everybody is having a good evening. If you're hot, this is the nice cool breezes that we get across the lake as you're learning how to become an expert trader with candlesticks. So I know some of you are still uh, trying to get your schedule set up. Get back with me. I hope so, Brad. Okay, let's see what we got here. That's not what I want. That's what I want. Okay. I usually don't make any projections other than what is the market telling us right now. However, we can put two and two together, and if this is a J-hook that has this magnitude of movement or this magnitude of movement, if we go to the longer-term chart, ah, see if I can make it a little bit smaller. Here's our all-time high right here. I can all right, and this is about the third time that it's come up and peak and peak. And are we coming up here to hit it a third time and resist? Well, if you put two and two together, do the colors of the TV, I don't know what you're asking. Dow Jones make any difference? Not really. Candles? Oh yeah, the candles do. That's what the. But here's the pattern. You can see the pattern setting up. Well, shit. So. If we're approaching the all-time high, and we can see a J-hook pattern setting up, okay, even though today's trading was below where it opened, if we can anticipate that there's a J-hook pattern setting up, what's that pretty much imply? Even if this is wave one, this is wave two, Wave three is going to come up here, which puts us into all-time high territory. Yeah, today was a red candle, but more importantly, it was a relatively indecisive candle. But more importantly is what type of pattern is it setting up? It pretty much told us on the short term here that when they pulled back to the T-line with a Make this bigger yet. A little indecisive trading, a doji, a doji. Um, that if this is, if we start seeing positive trading tomorrow, what can we conclude about this pattern? That a J hook, uh, a J hook pattern uh, is setting up. And J hook pattern is setting up. We can be a little bit aggressive on the buying as candlestick investors because we know that we had kind of a doji gap up, even though it was kind of a message day, meaning it opened and closed lower. We could be buying on any positive trading with the expectation that if a J-hook pattern is occurring right here, it's telling us the peaks or the all-time highs are going to breach and that we could have another move like this and or like this, which implies there's a lot more upside in this market. The other side of the coin is because we know that investor sentiment is, uh, is what moves markets, 
kind of analyze what we see every time there is not the announcement of good news, but the expectation that things are getting better. In this case, the uh, the tariff uh, talks with China might be improving. They are buying, or I say they, the market is buying on any anticipation of things getting better. <coughs> so with that in mind, if you see the pre-market futures opening up positive tomorrow, you want to go after probably one or more long positions. Kind of the same scenario over here on the NASDAQ, opened higher, traded lower. But if we start seeing immediate buying, especially if they come back up through today's open, you want to be buying very aggressively. So I usually always try to keep a little reserve of caution when things could go either way. But now things look like that through all the rhetoric coming out of Washington and all the politics, the investment around the world for U.S. stocks is still very strong. Okay, I guess I'm going to get a that or drive myself to drink. The other things, like crude oil, has come up here. This is the August contract. Having a hard time getting through the 50, but it hasn't gotten back through the key line. So it appears as if the... Uh, Crude oil prices are holding relatively steady, whereas gold, as we saw today, did a doji gap down. Now, remember, gold is a emotional trading commodity. I mean, when things look bad, they're buying gold. When things look good, they're selling gold. And that's what's apparently happening right now. I haven't looked at any of the other uh, futures. Let's see. Uh, soybeans whips all around. Uh, the bearish left right combo on wheat closing back below the T line. I at least looking for that area, and I haven't, I didn't even look at this today. What am I doing? Hogs. Look at the big inverted hammer. Now, a lot of people say, well, is this a weak signal? Well, what happened after a few days up? Took it up big profit taking. Now, just think of the logic. If it opens positive back into that profit taking, what's that tell you? The profit taking's over. Okay. I, that's all I'm going to look at here because right now we want to take a review of what we're really seeing here in this market. Which is there is a lot of patterns that we can recognize. We recommended CLDX, CDLX because of the bullish morning star type signal confirmation. If they traded higher, we were expecting it to go through this level. The fact that they gapped through that level pretty much told us we wave three in progress. Oh, the dollar was up. All right, thank you, Bert. I don't know whether I can. Yeah, the dollar up pretty strong. Okay, so uh, what am I doing? All right, we've CLDX. This is the reason why we try to teach people to use the best friend signal. Pick out four or five patterns that you know extremely well. But this is what we wanted to see. If, if you'd gone long that day. 
have a selling day. Now, that's either telling us they're consolidating or uh, making profits, but what do we expect if we see them turn it around after the selling day? That 45 degree. The reason I'm pointing it up because this is occurring all over the place. Look what happened on the best friend in Oracle. Oracle, to me, is not a very vibrant trader. Usually doesn't have a big uh, move as far as uh, percentages. But notice what happened after your best friend. That's when the percentage moves start. All right, and... That same scenario applies to something like SPWR. Came up, bigger, came back up. Now, this is why you want to know what the nature of each signal represents. Notice the indecision, the indecision, indecision, indecision. Bah, bah. Pretty much telling you when they were selling it off, they didn't have a whole lot of conviction. So as soon as you see something like that, and you see something like this, notice our little bullish flutter kicker signal. This is your alert right here. When you see that doji that has gapped up above the previous day's open, that's, that's just like a, uh, oh, a neon sign that says, all right, watch to see what it does tomorrow. Now, if we know that the doji rule, if you open up positive, it's going to trade positive, what type of pattern can we see setting up? There's your best friend. There's a consolidation. There's your J-hook pattern in progress. Now, notice what happened after the bullish flutter kicker. Now we've got another bullish doji sandwich pretty much telling us we've got more upside in this. So, again, these are just simple common sense analysis known or by knowing what each signal represents, each pattern represents. EVM, I'm going to re-recommend this. We own this. I'm going to re-recommend it, that if it breaks out through this level tomorrow, you want to be buying the J-hook pattern, wave one, wave two, wave three, classic pattern, fry pan bottom, J-hook. Again, the probabilities of this trading higher based upon this pattern is extremely strong. And then on top of the probabilities is the magnitude of return is extremely strong because we can calculate where it's, where it's probably moving, what percentage move based upon wave one, which I keep trying to uh, illustrate or emphasize, but there'll be a lot of stocks going up in an upward trend, but that slow upward trend and most of the stocks, that's not, not to say this right either, that we're better off finding the uh, patterns. We know the expected results based upon knowing what should happen after that uh, pattern. Best friend on Crocs. Now, is this a shooting star or is this just profit taking? We we'll easily know that by how they open this one tomorrow. Uh, I'm kind of illustrating the fact that we're identifying the things where we know the probabilities and the magnitude based upon what we should expect coming out of a pattern. Our Bob will break out, and Yeti, this is our expectation as far as a percentage return. I'm pointing this out because uh, I've had a few people still asking what the uh, ramifications are of going through all signals and patterns and top rank patterns <laughs> at, for, at the private training at Cuca Lake. It's basically to pinpoint your analysis on things that are going to make you good money when the market's going up. A lot of stocks will move up slowly in an up, slowly up trending market. Um, what we're looking for is to make as much hay as we can while the sun is shining. So we're looking for the patterns that are going to give us 
a lot more uh, upside potential based upon identifying. Does this gap tell us anything? Take a gander. First of all, it was right in this area, but the important part was we were biased based upon the uh, bobble breakout with a kicker signal. Yeah, this doesn't tell us a whole lot other than you always have a safety stop up here in case that things do get turned around. It's going to take some profits. But right now, I wouldn't be too concerned about that gap up today. We'd recommended VIPs because of the J-hook pattern. But notice where the J-hook pattern curve. Right smack dab on the 50. I mean, that just gives you that much more visual evidence that that's where the buying was occurring. ESV, all you can do here is stay long as long as it stays above the T-line. Again, there was your bullish harami. There's your doji sandwich. Where's your next likely target? Well, there's a wee little gap right here, right about at the 50-day moving average. Uh, we're only on stocks that we are in because, first of all, the reason we're in them is because they are basically the best-looking chart patterns or the high-profit chart patterns. Max R, some people say, was well, this a shooting star? He's just coming out of a J-hook pattern. Usually you want to see a shooting star at the end of a strong uptrend. This I would calculate more as just that doji day that you might be seeing a doji sandwich set up. And that's because we're just coming out of a pattern. Remember, uh, the signal is more relevant when it's in the appropriate place of a trend. And if that trend is right now creating a, a <coughs> um, Oh, CB, not really. That's why we use, this is why we come back to, to do this type of uh, session. Now, you can go back and look, obviously, at the uh, previous picks for the last three, five, uh, seven trading days. The reason we went through them in sessions like this and on the uh, chat room is once we decided we're going to buy, then we want to do a follow-up to see what you should be doing, not for specifically on that stock to say when we'd be buying and when to be selling, but to go through what the analysis would be of why we'd be buying and when would when we want to be selling. The reason we do that is because overall objective is that everybody learns how to do their own analysis of when to buy and when to sell so that you're not depending on anybody else. And the reason you don't want to be depending on anybody else is if somebody recommends something and you go ahead and buy it and not know the reason, Oops, I'm sorry, I got caught here. Um, I forgot what I was saying before I got caught. But what it boils down to is, if, oh, if somebody is recommending something and it doesn't work, you have no idea why it didn't work. If you learn what to do on each one of these trading uh, training sessions, um, or you learn what to do on each trade, then you don't have to rely on somebody else to tell you when to get in or when to get out of a position. Scoop pattern on VRNS. You can see the flat handle. That gave us the alert for, this, for the scoop. Now, things like SNAP. The one that helped me through the years was realizing 
that not every one of the trades are going to work. But if I got into something based upon a reason and that reason disappeared, close it out and move on to something else. Uh, Brad, that is true. So here's one where it popped up, looked like a good trade, looked like a good trade, but as soon as it started closing back below the halfway point of this candle, that was a pretty good reason to say, ah, the bulls are not there, let's close it out. Now what's my next criteria? Well, if the bulls came back in and traded above this level, I could always buy it back. But what I don't want to do, once I see that there's no bullish uh, participation, even on a strong buy situation, is I know that one-third of my trades aren't going to work. It doesn't make me feel bad or uh, anticipate that I am analyzing something wrong or that I'm just as stupid as I think I am. No, I'm just telling saying to myself, oh, this trade didn't work, let's move on to the next one. Because when I'm on to the next one, I know when I put money in it, I'm buying it on the basis that I'm looking at something that tells me the probabilities are in my favor. Whoops, what did I do? So if I see something like this, nice bullish move, but a Bearish engulfing signal today. The casting is in the overbought area. Um, now I know what I have to analyze on the next move. If it opens uh, lower, it didn't work. I close it out. Whoops. MPC. Get a dark cloud in the overbought area. What do I do now? Well, I know what my alternatives are. If it opens lower, I'm probably taking profits. It's going to come back and test the T line or the 50. If it opens higher, I'm still moving in the right direction. All right, I'm moving. This is my space here. Oh, oh I have a whole another road to do. TK, same scenario. If you bought on positive trading, you're buying on the basis that there was a day hook pattern, and it backed off by the end of the day. However, if it opens positive tomorrow, what can we assume about our pattern? It's still working. If it opens lower, what can we assume is happening? It's not a good, very good pattern. Um, And we're going to close out and move on to something else. Where would I put my stop? Probably about the halfway point of this candle. Remember, this was the candle that told us we were breaking out. I'd put a sell stop just below this level. That would also be below the 3T line. Um, that we, uh, that if it came back in this direction, it's not moving, obviously, in the right direction to confirm our pattern. DRK, look, observe the obvious. T-line crunch, bullish engulfing, close above the T-line. If it opened positive, what was it doing? It's pretty much telling you they were breaking out today. ATOS, it was breaking out, except it closed back in the range. What was the whole point of buying this one? Because we could see a fry pan bottom breakout. With it closing back just in the range, <coughs> what's it tell us? If it opens lower, it didn't break out, close it out. It still needs work. If it opens positive, you can be buying because it tells you the, the breakout is working. Now, we can also analyze what's happening in specific sectors. Now, new, now this is, Newmont was lower but it was still above the T-line, whereas AU, yes, down, 
This could be considered a short if it opens lower tomorrow and starts trading lower. Because as we saw, gold gapped down and is trading lower. Uh, after hours, it's trading down a little bit also. Let's see. This is what moving things. Mike. Again, kind of with the speculation that things are going to get a little bit better with China. But there was your kicker signal. Then your gap up, your gap up. That tells you, even though they open it and trading it lower, there's still a lot of power, a lot of bullish pressure on this price move. XON also had a setup. where if this trades lower tomorrow, our bobble pattern setup is gone. You want to close it out and wait for the next buy signal, which means this might just waffle in here until, until the T-line uh, or the 200 comes down to meet it. So you want to look at everything that you can see that everybody else is uh, watching and what type of pattern it's doing to get there. There's our bobble breakout on RVNC. Might be a dark cloud. Wouldn't want to see it lower today. Wow. Want to see it open and, and trade higher. Oh, my handwriting is getting bad. BC, this is why you want to watch to see what happens. When you're in the overbought area, the most logical place to put your uh, put your stop is at the open, especially with them gapping it up. Everything looked great this morning, but when this stuff, that should have been your alert, especially in the overbought area. You want to at least have protective stops on. So the worst case scenario would be it gaps up and then starts coming back back off. If you put your stop at the previous day's close, logic says if it comes down through there, you've probably got some sort of candlestick sell signal in the making, especially when you're up here in the overbought area. And ATNX did a dark cloud today. Remember what we were commenting on over last uh, or on Friday when this started moving up with exuberance. Start watching for your profit taking. Uh, yes. If the uh, yeah you saw a lot of potential sell signals, that's why it's going to be important to see what the overall markets do. Now here's a good strong uh, pattern. RF, or R, yeah, blah, 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 blah. ERFS, right hand bottom, kind of a breakout. That one should have a lot more upside. Notice the signal right here, kind of your bullish uh, left right combo. When you see a best friend gap up, but the it was black. Is that a cause for worry? Uh, no. If you see a gap up, a big gap up, and it trades lower, what do we call that? Anybody? What do we, there you go. That's called the message. The message was that even though they sold it off after they opened it, the message was that they gapped it up. There was a lot of buying force coming in into the trade. So what do you do when you see a message? I'm trying to think of which one it was. I think I've got it in here. So as soon as I find it, I'll uh, back to it.
yeah, that's still your message. They gapped up, pulled it back. So what do you want to see? What did this tell you right here? That they came into this with great strength. Now what do you want to see? You want to see when the profit taking is over and telling you. So those are good to find. So what do you do after that? Well, this isn't actually a message. But remember what happened over here? The next day they gapped it up and brought it back down, profit taking. But it was after a uh, best friend. You still look for something like this. The indecised day and then the profit taking is over. So if BC opens lower tomorrow, you could, yes. But then you would make sure that it wouldn't come back up and close above the T-line, the S&P. I'm guessing this was just consolidation back to the the uh, 50 to see if it's going to uh, act as a, act as like a J-hook pattern. Okay, where did I go? ESIQ. It's kind of a J-hook pattern setting up. All right, now let's get to some of the other ones that have, oh, the biggies. This one we're watching because look what's happened. You've got your, your bobble breakout. Again, it opened lower or opened higher and closed lower. But it did a bobble breakout. So you want to see this trade positive. And if it trades positive, you think your next target is likely to be after they broke through the 50. Gives it a good bullish uh, uh, reason to head for the uh, 200. Netflix. Get ready to buy this one. You can see kind of the J-hook pattern and the J-hook pattern occurring right here at a little resistance level telling you there's no more resistance, uh, wave one, wave two, wave three. So the, uh, if you like trading the biggies, now this one gapped up. This is Apple. Also kind of a message. They do indecisive trading and then start taking up. This message right here was the bulls came in with a uh, with great strength. <coughs> Excuse me. Amazon, look what's setting up. First of all, you've got a potential J hook pattern. Secondly. There was a doji that gapped up above yesterday's or Friday's open. It went this direction. If they open this positive tomorrow, what do you got going on? A bullish flutter kicker confirming your J-hook pattern. Labu traded positive, but Came back down into the, almost into the trading range. Still, uh, still an uptrending stock. You just have to make sure they don't start bringing it back down toward the, uh, T line. NVIDIA. Kind of the same scenario. Gapped up and doing right now Kind of a bearish belt hold. It, if you're long on this one, it has to open positive and trade positive. A lower open would tell you they're probably bringing it back here to the T-line area. That's what that dark cloud kind of ill And we were watching uh, Facebook. Facebook breaks out, going into wave three, same magnitude as this one. That's going to bring you up in this area. Now, it didn't confirm today. This is why once something opens and you see it start trading lower, you don't plan to get in it until 
they turn it around and come back up through the open. That becomes a very good uh, good entry level. When you say po open positive, are you talking free market? No, nope. at 930. Free market trading isn't always relevant and most of the time isn't relevant as far as what the overall supply and demand are, is doing. It's when everybody's coming in to uh, make their decisions to buy and sell is when that's why the open price is uh, the most important. And we did nugget. Nugget selling off. That could be a good possible short. Okay. The Tesla. So here's some more that look good. Zine. You can see kind of the wedge formation with a possible breakout. Notice the buying buy signals right here on the uh, right here on the uh, 50. If they break through this downtrending channel, now you've got wave three coming out of this wedge. Ease. J hook pattern confirmation. If you bought this today or you're thinking about buying, you buy on, on. All right. We did Micron. We did uh, C C D A. Here's another relevant chart in the sense that you had kind of a cradle pattern. Your best friend signal, your breakout, this probably has a lot more strength to it. Westlake, a big belt hold. Now, remember what a belt hold illustrates. They took out a lot of sellers. So any positive trading from here has less sellers in the way. <coughs> then you look at all the other relevant factors where they took it to, right smack dab to the 50 when the buying turned it around and started back up again. That's a pretty good indication that they're not selling off. And if this is kind of a fry pan bottom type pattern, get ready for any strength, you can be buying this one. Ocular, there's your bobble breakout setup. Here's your doji sandwich. If this opens positive tomorrow, you want to be buying immediately. Because what do you think everybody is watching? The 200-day moving average. What are we watching? A little fry pan bottom, slow curve, followed by a doji sandwich. If it opens positive, confirming the doji sandwich, it's pretty much telling us everybody's starting to pile in. We can start getting in there immediately uh, while well, a lot of most investors, I'd say most investors, the typical investor will say, oh, I'm going to watch to see if this keeps going. And they're buying much later, adding to your profitability, uh, knowing what that pattern should be telling you. Here's another one, a bobble breakout on MLCO. If it opens positive, what about the 200-day on? Uh, doesn't matter. We're not buying or selling the W or the uh, 200. We're just buying what it's telling us more than likely. If it starts confirming, it's going to go through uh, it's going to go through the 200. So that doesn't mean it's irrelevant. It just means you watch to see what it does once it does get there. Carbon black, you can see the J-hook pattern. You can see right where you are right now. If this opens positive, giving you a doji sandwich, next wave to the upside is uh, is working. In SABR, you can see the hammer uh, type spinning top. Get ready to buy this J hook pattern. There was your belt hold. Didn't confirm, didn't confirm, didn't confirm, but now you've got a kicker-type 
signal coming off a spinning top. If this opens positive, what do you got going on? You're confirming this signal. You're confirming this signal, and you've got a bobble breakout. There's your bobble breakout on CDXS. Another one that if it starts trading positive, your J-hook pattern is going to give you that type of move. Moss. This was a bobble breakout. Notice your doji gap up through that, that, uh, the bobble breakout resistance level, telling you uh, you stay long until you see a sell signal. Floor and decor, there's your bobble breakout. So anytime I see a bobble breakout, I know the probabilities of it moving higher is extremely good. An EAF, another bobble breakout. Kind of your classic pattern. Where do you think your next target will be if it starts trading positive? Probably up here to the 200. Okay. An LJPC. That looks like one starting to set up. You watch to see what happens once it gets to the 200. FGEN, notice where the morning start signal occurred, right smack dab off the 50. Where do you think your next target is going to be? Right here at the 200. So, again, what we're looking for is things that we can recognize based upon what happens on a reoccurring basis. A pattern, kind of a big, sharp fry pan bottom. But look at your bullish hurrah. I'm telling you, the selling has stopped right here at the T-line. Look at your breakout. What do you think your upside potential is? This move right here. So if we know that's a an assumption, a high probability assumption, we know where to be buying. So if we bought today and it closed here, we know that it has to open positive and trade positive. If it starts trading lower, what do we have versus a J-hook pattern. We've got more of a double top. You want to close out and move on to something else. This is Rite Aid. This one you can be buying. Notice your doji sandwich. Notice where it's supporting right on the 50. If this gets moving, this becomes an attractive chart as they're breaking through the 50, going to the uh, 200 is going to give you a good, hefty upside potential. And just a couple more. There's a. There's the 45 degree. Starting off of this one. XMCR, there's kind of your gap up 45 degree, a sharp 45 degree. So these are the type of things that if you can become uh, adept at finding, which they occur almost every single day, it's essentially telling you that you're, you're looking for the things where there's been a drastic change of investor sentiment, and now you can kind of anticipate what the results will be. <coughs> Oops, we were watching deer today to see if it was bearish and golfing, which it didn't quite do. It might be a dark cloud, but the other uh, facet was that it didn't close below the T-line. Okay, so I usually don't try to project too far out in the future, 
But logic says if this is a J-hook pattern and they break through this level, that wave three is going to be putting us in a situation where it's breaking out into new territory. Now, remember what happens. Uh, Jim, yeah, I think they're, all, they're already formulated for you. Yeah, I think you can buy the package and have all the uh, all the signals and patterns already built in. That was a that if this breaks out, we're we're going to be buying on any strength right up to the point where it's at the breakout <laughs> because of the anticipation that we're in a J hook pattern. That puts us in a position where well before everybody else is dying, you're already established in position. And what happens after that is everybody else comes piling in on the breakout. You're already in the, the positions to, to take advantage of that. Uh, so this, uh, this is what I wanted to get back to. Somebody was asking, how do I keep from – uh, but I can find the patterns. I just can't. Uh... Oh, Joe, oh, yes, I'm still work on it. As a matter of fact, I'm working on some downloads right now. I'm trying to get it done. As a matter of fact, I'll probably work on it again this weekend. Um, well, I guess the other question is, has anybody in here been able to uh, piece the scans for think or swim together with the candlestick patterns successfully? John D., would you email me your phone number, please? Steve at candlestickforum.com. What I'm trying to do is set up a uh, video so it's an easy step-by-step -step for everybody. So if people have got some simple techniques, that's what I'd like to get my hands on. A correlation between dividend yields and Breakout candlesticks. Okay. I don't think so, CD. Anyways, right now, I am a lot more confident that even though we're uh, pushing the uh, breakout area or the uh, recent highs, that things could be moving with a much greater degree of strength if they break out through the uh, through the recent highs. So with that, does anybody have any general questions about candlesticks? Ah, uh, yeah, there are a lot of bobble breakout. Uh, situation so this is oh that's what I was saying is uh, somebody was asking what we're going to be doing at the uh, the lake is kind of getting everybody mentally uh, in line because I hear so many people say oh I, I can find patterns I know when to get in I know when to get out but I don't seem to be making any money that means there's a glitch somewhere, and this is where the concentration of, uh, of knowing what the signals and patterns are telling you allow you to get a, uh, a discipline so that you're not sitting in six good positions and three 
positions that aren't doing well, which definitely offset overall return of your uh, – no, you don't – Brad, you don't need a bigger account. That's where when we go through the training on your uh, money management, that the amount of positions that you have is not a function uh, of trying to get as many good trades. It's a function of making sure that you're constantly cultivating your portfolio so that you're in the best trades. Okay. Oh, uh, Webb, no, you'll be surprised at the amount of information. If, if we're sitting in the screen for three hours in the morning, and four hours in the afternoon, sometimes five hours. And then I've had a few groups where we came back after dinner and we went another two hours. So remember, you're not having to memorize anything. You're not having to figure out formulas. All you have to do is let your mental eye and my droning voice kind of accumulate in your head because the next time you see a, a pattern, you're not going to have to say, oh, is that a pattern or what should I do with this pattern? It's going to already be in your head. You'll know what to do. Uh, yes. But that is just telling you, remember, on a J-hook type pattern, what usually happens? The stochastics will start curling back up. So, remember, it's the pattern first, then the stochastics will follow. Uh, it looks like we've got a group of uh, three guys that want to do all theirs, so we might be doing two sessions. The first session would be going from uh, oh, Sunday, The uh, everybody flies in on the 3rd. We go the 4th, 5th, and halfway through Wednesday. That group flies in Wednesday. We do Thursday, Friday. Uh, now, that group flies in Tuesday. We do Wednesday, Thursday, and the first Friday. Now, yeah, if you, if you are wondering whether you get enough information, that's a question you might want to ask in the chat room. We've got probably a good dozen plus or more people that have taken the session. Uh, just ask them what, what they got out of it. Can you use the same patterns for weekly or even monthly? Uh, yes. Remember, Guy, candlestick signals are the accumulative knowledge of everybody buying and selling during a specific time frame. It doesn't matter whether you're looking at a one-minute chart or a monthly chart. Um, and, yes, the 50 and the 200 are still applicable. This chart right here is a daily chart. The parameters look exactly the same if you flip over to the 10-minute chart. Everything else works. Uh, Juan, it's Steve at CandlestickForum.com. <clears throat> so, again, this is the advantage of having a chat room uh, where you don't necessarily have to listen to one person's ideas or process or uh, program. As you can see, a lot of you that are in the chat room during the day, we've got Trader Abe that has his system showing good trades. Gary C. shows good trades. Um, Todd, Roy. So the nice thing about a chat room like this is that you're looking at what everybody else is looking at that may have a specific uh, setup. And when you look at the charts, 
what you want to do is uh, figure out what are they looking at, why is that a good looking chart. Okay, I guess with that, Jim, go ahead and do the double line. And in 3.8 seconds, do the next double line. Okay, Con Ed. Ah. Watch out for your shooting star in the overbought area right there. If it opens lower, they're coming back to test the, uh, the 50. L. L. Oh, Shazam. Nothing of any great magnitude here. You still need to see a good, strong breakout. And advanced micro. Oh, sorry about that. I'm on the 10 minute chart. Let's start over again. On Ed. <clears throat> Nothing yet. I wouldn't be short at this point, but I wouldn't be going long just yet. L. Nothing here. I wouldn't. If I went long in the last, I would have closed it out today. Advanced micro. Not a powerful chart. Notice every time they open it, they bring it down. Open it, bring it down. It's still one that if you like it, you can stay long, but you need to see positive trading. It's just not a strong. It, it wouldn't be one that I would be trading right now. How come I can't hit the symbol? That I've got to quit drinking when I do this. This is your message. A gap up opens higher and closes lower. Now, what do we look for as far as that message? Look for indecisive day or positive trading telling us the profit taking is over. You, 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 you. Ah. Eh. That'd be a toughie to trade. You do have a little morning star signal up to 50. If you're long, you can stay long. But it needs to get up, it needs to open positive and trade positive from here. Zoom. Zoom, uh, <clears throat> you more have to be short with your bearish left right combo. If I was, uh, doing anything with this, I'd be short. Or if I was thinking of going short, if it came back down through today's open, I'd start short at that level. Roku is backed off after this big move to the upside right until you saw the dark cloud and then the close below the T-line. Right now, I would stay short until you see a confirmed buy signal. Melly. Whoops, I did. Melly, you can get ready to buy. Just remember your percent return won't be all that great, but you can see what's happening at the bottom of the uh, trend channel. You get buy signals. Home Depot, J hook pattern. If this, I'd be an aggressive buyer if it came back up through today's high. That would be J hook. Classic pattern breakout has occurred. Report. Whoops. Mercy sakes. Report has to open positive. If it opens lower, it tells you to buy it. Today's recovery failed. You want to close it out. It has to open positive if you're long and you want to stay long. MasterCard. Ah. Eh. Low, steady uptrend. I wouldn't trade it because of the lack of movement. But if you're holding it long term, you just stay long as long as it stays above the T-line. 
Intel. That was your uh, uh, last gas open. Came right back into the trading range. Now, if you're long, it needs to stay above the 50. If it, if it starts trading lower tomorrow, especially below the T-line, I would uh, close it out. Uh, TL, TLRY, you can get ready to buy this one. On positive trading on the uh, on the uh, J hook type setup O E S X, you can buy this one on positive trading, breaking out through this level. Uh oh, whoops. Here's another one that broke out big time. This would have been one where if it was way up here, I would have gone to my 10-minute chart. And just like any other chart, when it moved up big and started coming back, where do you think it was coming back to? This level. I would have probably taken profits. And if I saw it, might even flip down to a five-minute chart. So my five-minute chart says, oops, I got a, uh, a doji, a bearish engulfing. That's probably coming back. And when it's doing this, that 10-minute chart is starting to get a little bit soggy also. That's now where I was still on the 10-minute chart. You can still buy this, though, on positive trading, telling you the uh, profit-taking is over. Little J hook pattern. You stay long on this one. Don't let it close back below the T line. O V I B. I did that. That's not working. It did be F R S. Now that's two laps. B R F S. Nice little breakout. You could be buying this one. Avid, just stay long. Look for a bullish doji sandwich. Use the T-line as your stop. And EXTR, another one. You can stay long, but I would probably have a safety stop at the 200. But right now, it looks like you've got the potential coming up here to fill up, fill that gap. Here's your bullish doji sandwich. How did I get way down there? EB. Uh, you can be buying this one. It's not anything exuberant just yet. First of all, you got to break out through this level, which means it's got to break through the 50. And CLR, another one where you stay long as long as it stays above the yeah, the T or three T line. If it trades lower, again, it's coming back to consolidate to the fifty. Halliburton, uh, it's slowing down. If you like it, you stay long as long as it stays up above the T line. Schlumberger, same scenario. Use the uh, T line as your stop. SVRA, this is where I always say watch to see what it does once to the T-line. So it looks like they've based here. I wouldn't be a buyer, though, until it gets up through the T-line. Oh, uh, yeah, that's not a, a severe best friend. That's that's just more of a, uh, remember, a, bullet, a best friend is a where you can see the gap up. This really didn't gap up all that much. McDonald's. Oh, uh, another one that's just a slow, steady uptrend that you stay long as long as it stays above the T-line. Tesla we did, which is a one that you can be buying, especially if it comes back up through today's open. 
That tells you the uh, bobble breakout is working. ADSK. Uh, ADSK. A little kicker type signal. If you're buying, just watch to make sure it gets through this level. It wouldn't be anything I'd go after early unless you see some good force in it tomorrow. And MLNT, feel that 45 degree. I'm suspecting at least your first target right now is the 200-day uh, moving average. R-G-E-N, stay long. Use yet Friday's open as your stop. It shouldn't come back down through that level. And we did our E-N-C, stay long. E-C-A, stay long, fry pan bottom. ENLC, look for a positive open tomorrow, which would be giving you a, a doji sandwich. Look at you, kind of your bullish double flutter kicker signal. Buy on this, buy on positive trading. Your first target should be the 50. And Marna, another one that can be bought on positive trading tomorrow. Bullish engulfing. Yeah, be ready to buy this. I don't know why that line's in there. If you're buying on positive trading tomorrow, don't use the T, or use the T line as your stop. Don't let it come back through that level. Uh, that one we couldn't. Uh, oh, they were. I forget what they were doing. But this one would be a toughie to trade if they're if you're thinking of shorting it. Watch to see what happens heading for the. Uh, Uh, 200 day moving average. Uh, uh, JB, you've got so many laps piling up tonight, you're going to be running all night long. Team, nothing wildly exciting, just a very slow uptrend. Oh, that's right, they were restructuring. Okay, right now I'm probably more optimistic that there's another wave about to come breaking out into new territory because once they start announcing that they're hitting new highs almost on a daily basis, you're going to have people coming out of the woodwork to start investing. So you want to be prepared for it. You want to be good in good positions before the big moves start. Okay, everybody, with that, everybody have a good summer evening. We'll see you bright and early in the morning. We'll see you then.